Are you stuck? How about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for Magical Moments with Elena as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. In just 60 minutes, Elena will help you take control of your life and push you to do the things you never thought you'd do. So get ready to take back your power and celebrate life with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and we're all about that ease and that flow in your life. All right, so, you know, I have been watching everything that's going on in our world. Yes, I do watch things. (laughs) In my little calm world, I still see. (laughs) But here's the thing. Last week, I spoke about the three steps I use and I use with clients to gain a higher perspective and to process the healing, okay? Why do we want to do that? Oh, my gosh. Look around. People are lashing out. It's anger, anger, anger. I had a friend tell me uh, he was out in his yard talking to a neighbor when the other neighbor came up and started yelling. He was so mad because everybody wasn't mowing their lawn at the very exact time. And so the, the whole neighborhood did not look uniform and nice. Seriously? You're going to get so angry about that? And... Why are you trying to control everyone else to your agenda? I'd love to say that's only one incident. That's not. We have a problem right now. We can't have any discussion in this world without anger coming in. This is very important. Last week I talked about the three steps, okay, that I use when I try to process something. And that's retreat, energy, awaken. When I did that, it was brought up to me that a lot of people are having more problems with the retreat part. I think you know why. It's because we try to hide from our feelings. You know, we don't, we think people can't see what's going on inside of us. I hate to tell you, yes, they can. (laughs) That's a news flash. We think we say, oh, I'm fine. And the whole world believes us. I once had a a guy, I was seeing just a friend who looked at me one time and, and it was after I had broken up with someone who was very special with me to me and I, in the middle of the conversation this friend of mine turned and said you look so sad in your eyes he says you're smiling but your eyes are sad isn't that interesting and here I thought I was just really hiding the hurt that I felt inside I hadn't processed it yet we can't hide our feelings We can't hide it because, as I explained last time, it goes into the water and our system, we're 80% water. That water affects every cell in our body, every muscle, every synapsis, every part of our connection to our mind. Now, so how do we process it when the world is so volatile? Well, we have to retreat a little bit. We've got to do some things this is, I wanted to, I have a quote for you. This is a cool quote. This is from uh, Sigmund Freud. Yes, I called up Sigmund. <laughs> Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. We become closed not only to people's pain, but also their happiness. Now, look up that quote 
And if you are someone who's hurting, you should put it on your mirror. Because you need to look. Hurt people hurt people. And the more we stuff it down, Jung used to say that we go through these experiences, we hide them inside ourselves, and then what we do is we push it, they go into our subconscious mind. Now, when they're in our subconscious mind, guess what they do? They go inside, and it forms all our unconscious behaviors. And that's why it lashes out. And that's why you're seeing people chase people down in cars and, and yell at them. That's, or maybe that's what I see. You might not have seen that. But you've seen the anger everywhere. That's because it's been in there. It's seething. It's feeding on the fire in you. And it's unprocessed. So, and here I come <laughs> saying, well, you got to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> and I know a lot of you are going, what? Yeah, you've got to separate. You've got to separate and start to look inside. There's many aspects to that. And looking inside is probably the most important step because you got to know what's going on inside you. You've got to understand. Remember last week when I said, you know, sometimes I didn't even know what was going on and I'd get a movie and I, uh, a sad movie on a Sunday afternoon and I would allow myself to cry and then all of a sudden it would unearth what was really bothering me. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you got to do. You got to let it out. You've got to find out what, how to deal with this hurt or this pain or this frustration or this, oh, anything. One time I was so frustrated with a team I had hired in the very early years of my business. I ended up doing this writing. They call it spirit writing. I think um, psychologists call it something else where you just keep writing and writing and writing and writing until this subconscious mind comes out and everything comes on earth on that paper. And all of a sudden I was finding myself quoting the uh, Alice in Wonderland, you know, the Queen of Hearts, off with their heads. And you know what? It felt so good. Of course, we didn't do that. But that's how frustrated I was feeling. I even wrote down, man, that feels good. <laughs> you know, we all have those moments, no matter who you are. We got to get them out. Think of that terrible frustration I had inside. Feeding everything from that moment on in my life with that kind of feeling. Do you think I'm going to create a good future for myself? I had to write, get it out, and then go inside myself and say, okay, so what is going on? Why do I want everybody's head off right now? <laughs> Why am I choosing the Queen of Hearts instead of Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> I've got to figure this out and process it. Now, a lot of times going into a meditative state is perfect because you, you, the Tao has a wonderful one where you see the light coming in through the top of your head. It goes down to that block where you can address it, that hurt, that pain, and you can in an observatory way, meaning you're above the trees, you're not getting messed up in all the garbage of it, you can start looking as to why did this affect me so much? Because underneath every feeling of frustration and anger, there is a silent hurt inside you. Something you grew up with. A lover who's betrayed you, all of a sudden there's something linked up in your childhood, which um, Jung used to say, which is we're doing a little shadow work. There's something in your childhood that created the condition for you to feel that way if somebody broke up with you. There is something in some part of your history that when you get fired from a job, you constantly feel like a failure. So we've got to heal it on many levels. And it's not as hard. It sounds, oh my gosh, it sounds like years of therapy, right? No, it's not. That's the, the whole thing about it. If you can get yourself quiet, you, you always hear me say, grab a cup of tea, sit down in your favorite chair, create the sacred space, 
that I always talk about because that's a place where you can go. It's like um, I love I love all these little, you know, the little fairy tales. I remember there was a musical of Cinderella, and she said, in my own little corner, in my own little chair. Remember that? Yeah. That's your sacred space. That's where you sit and you can have that cup of tea and say, okay, okay. So I'm crying at every sad movie here. What in the heck is going on? Why am I so hurt? And why did this have to end up the way it did? And when you start to look at things, as other things pop up, you can address them and heal them. And when you start to heal them, then the anger subsides. And you're saying, but Elena, I have a good cause. And yes, I understand. You're looking at the little... The girl who was promoting save the wolves, save the environment, save this. I mean, I was saving everything. I was a, I I worked for right, you know, for causes that supported equal rights. I worked, I did all that in my teenage and college years, and very much, I was very much an activist in a lot of ways. So, all right, here I am. I know, I know, we have a cause. But this is the thing. If we're acting out in hurt or in anger, we can't see clearly. We can't do anyone any kind of benefit because we're hurt. And when I found myself stepping back and saying, okay, so why am I feeling like everybody is attacking the wolves? Well, because they are. (laughs) But why? And then you look at the different causes and you start to see the other side and you start to see why does it affect me so much. Then all of a sudden, you gain an inner understanding of yourself. That incredible, beautiful soul and self you have hiding in there, being bombarded by all these emotions. And once you can open up that door, then you can start to heal. And I'll tell you what happens. Your shoulders start to relax. The aches and pains in your body start to subside. And you can move on to move the rest of that residue energy out of your system. Now, ways you can retreat. I love the sacred space. I love to ask myself why. I love to sit in there and just say, okay, so why did this happen? Why did it affect me? Could I have handled it a better way? Is this really the right move for me? How do I move? Do I move past this, or how do I gain acceptance of this? I ask myself these questions. Do I want to keep this story, or do I not? Yeah, I survived that terrible situation, but do I want to be a survivor, or do I want to heal from it? I start asking things like this of myself. And I listen to the deepest part of myself without judgment. I can walk through the woods if that gives me peace. I can talk to a friend, a close friend, not a negative friend who's going to feed the fuel, but somebody who's going to really listen to you. And, and if you say, hey, help me do this, help me to see c- some clearness here. I've been angry for so long. I need someone to help me see through this forest. And I bet they will. So call on that close friend. Sometimes they can see more than you can see, and you never even knew it. Talk to a professional. Talk to a therapist. Contact me. I've worked with, my gosh, I've worked with so much with people with anger and trauma and sadness and anxiety and oh, all that stuff. And definitely some uh, trauma with um, a lot of the domestic abuse. I did that in Right Relations. But the most important thing is start doing something. And shut off all the stuff that feeds the anger. That's the second step. You're retreating. So turn off the news for a little while. I guarantee it won't go away. (laughs) All right? 
So turn it off for a little while. Turn off the music that is going to aggravate and feed the anger inside of you. I always think of anger and anxiety as this little goblin inside of us. Stop feeding the goblin of anger. Stop feeding the, the, the goblin of, there are all these little goblins, <laughs> of hurt. Stop feeding them. So you've got to let go of, of stuff that makes you feel worse. And I, I admit it, okay, I, you know, I'm not so not in touch with reality. I know you'll put on the Disney feel good, maybe the soul movie or something, and you'll go, oh, yeah, right. Okay, yes, but it's a beginning. And every time you say, yeah, right, to a really good story that's optimistic and fun, that shows how much you're already hurting inside, believe it or not. So it's time to retreat. Take up healthy things that renew the body. That's the third thing. Like yoga, there's beautiful restorative yoga that really helps you to stretch. And as you ease into the stretches, you're, you're seeing all that negativity leave that muscle. Walks, taking walks. I've started to walk my big red dog. It's so, oh my gosh, you get up, you really try to get up early. Believe me, that's sometimes difficult, but I am trying, and, and it helps that he comes into my room right at that 6.30, 7 o'clock time. Oh, boy. But out we go. We walk Little River Wetlands. I see the barn swallows. I hear the frogs in their little symphony. I mean, th that's healing in itself, knowing that you're not alone. These are the things you do within the retreat. And then there's one other important thing start to honor yourself yes you heard me start to honor yourself treat yourself kindly you're going through a major transformation you're healing some of the darkest things that are have been leading and causing your life to go astray causing your relationships to go astray so start to honor yourself. Treat yourself to baths. Listen to your body. If it says it's had enough, it's had enough. Because you're not going to be able to take the noise of crowds just for a little bit. You're trying to process something. Allow yourself the process. If you have to go to work, of course, we all have to work somewhere, right? So if you go to work, that's fine. Just don't get yourself if you need to take lots of breaks or you need to listen to music on your lunchtime, take a really good book that really nourishes you and feels good, or listen to a podcast, listen to the show, listen to others that are really good, just to get your mind calm again. And when you go in, just be friendly, take bathroom breaks, do that wonderful meditation that I said in the bathroom. Yes, in the bathroom, where you just breathe in, breathe out, breathe in nice and deep, breathe out. Then when you breathe in, feel the space between the breathe in and the breathe out. That's a mini transcendental meditation. There are things you can do to keep yourself centered, balanced. But it's time to honor yourself. And you know what? When you start honoring yourself, then stuff starts to align in your body, meaning you start to pull back from the anger, the anger is starting to be released, and inside yourself you can actually start to feel your own intuition. Your intuition, not the guy who, who's got you all upset or the, the cause that got you all upset, but your own intuition that can help guide you from knowing when it's good for you and when it's not good for you, when you feel good, when you don't. All that stress eating will go away, that um, anger will go away, that anxiety when you go to bed, because you'll know from your body. And you'll start listening to that, because that's spirit talking to you. It's time that we... 
stop using the excuse of anger. Stop using the excuse that I can't meditate. Stop using these excuses that keep you from doing the processes that you need to do to live a better life, to live with the ease and flow. We all want a magic pill. But my gosh, people, you are the magic pill. And the way to access that magic pill is to start doing the tools that gives you the opportunity to heal. I would love, my gosh, I would be a, such a multi-million, billion dollar person if I could give you a pill. But really, that's not what it's about. It's not about masking it. It's about learning how to deal with it and using it to move us forward in a positive way, not in a negative way, and not to be a person that hurts other people, but a person that helps heal other people just by smiling. So this retreat thing is probably one of the most important steps. Try it out. And most importantly, if you feel unsure, contact someone. Like I said, a friend, a therapist, me. (laughs) I'm serious. Try that. You owe it to yourself. You so owe it to yourself. Because I'll tell you what, we have this life on this earth to experience many things. And if you're stuck, people always want to know their purpose here on this life. I I get that all the time. What's my purpose? And they always think it's got to be this grand thing. But what if it is this whole incredible life of yours was learning how to heal the hurt of the past? What if the whole purpose is learning how to manage that anger so that all of a sudden your life turns into something you are excited to get up and live without all the baggage? Purposes of our soul and why it's here are usually something along those lines. And that's why we go through these lessons. And so many of us are shutting off how to learn the lesson. Destroying everything in our path. And yes, that's exactly what's happening. So you owe it to yourself to just retreat a little, process, find the direction and the help that you need to get through this process, get that sacred place. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to put on video. I'm, I've got a, I don't know if you know, I've moved. <laughs> that was interesting. And I'm putting up, I decided on my back patio, I'm going to create a sacred space. And because I have to hang things <laughs> like veils, you might not want to miss this video because you know what? Elena and her wonderful, magical hands (laughs) trying to put up stuff is and doesn't like to measure is always an experience to be enjoyed. (laughs) So join me and see what it is. What do I do to create my sacred space? And your sacred space can be as as simple or as complex as I'm making it. I wanted a place that when I step into it, Oh, it's like I stepped into a fairyland, which is very apropos since I love those little um, uh, wonderful stories we were told when we were kids, fairy tales. So that's for me. But whatever you like is what's important. And maybe when you're watching that video, and I will let you know when it's coming out, it'll probably be two weeks exactly from this show. And when I, it'll be on my YouTube channel. And that's just Elena Chapman. A-L-E-N-A, okay? And just, yeah, keep, and also you can find all these shows on there too, plus any value videos I do. You might want to sign up for my YouTube channel. 
But I'll tell you, this is going to be really cool. And you can start to get your mind ticking on what you want your sacred space to be. Because that's where I process everything. That's where I have all my creativity. That is my solace. It is my little corner in my little world. And it's really helpful to have that when you're hurting. Okay? So anyway... Guys, I love you all. you got to remember, spirit is love. But if we are so crowded with so much of those little goblins that we're feeding all this negativity to, they're ruling the, they're, they're ruling the shots. You can't find the love. Spirit runs. You know? It's time to get back to the love inside you. It's time to, to send those goblins packing. Yeah? Get their little stuff gathered on a stick and send them out the door. It's time so that you can have spirit flowing through you and intuition. Check out Soul Manifesto. If you want and you are trying to process this and you would like me to work for you, go to soulmanifesto.com and on the contact page, just say, Elena, I heard your show. I'd like to contact you. And, and leave some way that I can contact you. <laughs> I get some, and it's like, okay, well, I don't have any clue how to contact. So please put your email address, put a phone number. It's all very private. I'm not going to process it. I'm not putting it anywhere, but I will contact you. Okay? I'll always text first, so I promise. As always, guys, spirit is love. So let's start opening ourselves up to that love, living that love. And yes, the love is the strongest force on earth. And why? Because it's filled with spirit. Have a fantastic day. Let's be happy. This has been Magical Moments with Elena featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.